Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. April 15th, 2019 is considered to be tax day in America. For many, this is considered a nerve-wracking time of year. Exactly one year before this pending doomsday, though, a ray of sunshine shone its light upon the podcasting world forever, changing the way we remember the history of the NFL. Because this was the day the Football History Dude podcast first launched. This happens to coincide with the upcoming season of the NFL, even though it wasn't planned that way. For you see, this upcoming year, the NFL will celebrate its 100th season. Welcome to the Football History Dude Podcast where each episode is a journey back in time to learn about the rich history of the NFL. Your host is Arnie Chapman. Football is his passion, and he wants you to come along with him to explore the yesteryear of the gridiron. So hop on board his DeLorean, and let's get this baby up to 88 miles per hour. Great Scott. This time as we step off our DeLorean, the date is April 15th, 2018. We are in anywhere planet Earth. Because this is the day that the football history dude went live. And I wanted to give a huge thanks to everyone out there that supported me along the way. You see, I'm an independent. And this is my side gig. That's not my normal kind of punch in the clock, go to kind of work, drink a cup of coffee kind of deal. I would like it to be that way, but at the moment, that's not the case. Now, it's been awesome, though. And someday, like I said, I hope that this is my permanent gig. But with that being said, if you have enjoyed some of the episodes I put out there, there are various ways you can help support the show. And, you know, keep the lights on, as they say. Speaking of that, I do have a merchandise store, and that opened up not too long ago, and there are various affiliate links to some very good products out there. And on the site, you can find more to that, which it's at thefootballhistorydude.com, if you haven't heard that before as well. To get to the store, there's a little, uh, you just go to the website, and up in the top right corner, it says FHD store, and It's going to take you to where we have all the merchandise. But let's get back with this show. Now, I didn't know what to think when I first started this show. I was excited, nervous, all the above, and I I just wanted to get something started. But now, we're at the 50th episode. So I wanted to give a little bit of a mini recap and discuss the future of what I see, the show, the vision, and, you know, talk about kind of how the reason why I got here again a little bit, just in case you wanted to know, you know. Now, I thought about this podcast, not specifically this one, but having a podcast for many years. And, well, there was about six or seven years ago, I had a fantasy football league that it covered my home league. And I was just, just for fun, you know, just for giggles and stuff. But I did realize that, hmm, this is something I enjoy. So later, therefore, let's just fast forward to the beginning of 2018. It was actually the end of 2017 that I kind of started thinking about it. I started this podcast but it was at the time called the Fantasy Football Dude because you know, that's my passion. I love fantasy football. But as we all know, the market is flooded for fantasy football. So basically, I decided I'm, I'm going to give up on this thing. I don't, I don't want to do any kind of podcasting. And then a light bulb moment came on. I thought, hey, the history of the NFL. And I want to say that Dan Carlin's hardcore history was a major influence. And I'm sure he's not listening out there. But if you are, Dan, hey, thank you for uh, helping me out here. Because I've always loved learning about the past, how things have come to be, but football, no, that's more my major passion and hobby. So I, after listening to his show for so long and other kind of shows like that, I was like, hey, I'm going to search for football history. A couple of them came up, but a lot of them were outdated from like 2016 and previous years, and it was just very difficult to find the history of the NFL. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start my own show. I'm going to do some research because I'm curious. And that's what I kind of started on this journey with. And I decided on the name, the football history dude, because that word dude. Now, if you have a conversation with me, I'm pretty sure 
at some point in time, I'm probably going to say do to you, and that's just going to be what it is, and that's how it's going to go. But I'm just an NFL fan. Like I said, was interested in the history of it, but I'm not a historian of the NFL. So each week, I research the episodes with very prior little knowledge, and then I just regurgitate them, and hopefully I'm spreading it out at you at the right way, you know? I mean, I believe that anybody can do this. And if you're interested in starting your own show, please let me know. You know, it could be about the history of the NFL, like my show, fantasy football, or I don't know, even talking about the intrigue of installing HVAC units. And if that tickles your fancy, then just go on and do what you got to do. And uh, if you wanted to reach out to me for some help on this, you can head to thefootballhistorydude.com slash contact. I'd love to answer anything that you have and help maybe point you in the right direction for some of the things that I did and maybe help mitigate some of the mistakes that I've made as well. But if you're new to this show, or if you only listen for a couple episodes or such, here's some of the topics that I've already covered. At the beginning, we had to go way back to, you know, how did football become created? You know, this thing where, why do they call it football? You throw it around and you kick it, I guess, sometimes, but mostly it's throwing around and running with it. So we had to start back at the beginning. The first episode was Mr. Walter Camp. This was the father of American football. He started us off because we had to figure this thing out. Then we would work our way to other types of episodes. We discussed how his name, William Pudge Heffelfinger, he was the first professional football player. This is because there was a uh, document that they now call Pro Football's birth certificate. Then we had to shift a little bit forward to, hey, they've been playing football for a little bit, professional football. But how did they create the NFL? Spoiler alert for those of you that haven't listened, it was a bunch of dudes inside of a Hupmobile auto showroom back in the very early 1900s. It was back in 1920. Then we would kind of have just throughout there, just keep talking about the 20s and 30s and different things that happened to really start this show on the road and get the NFL uh, at the roots part of the situation. And then we had a uh, brief overview of the first Hall of Fame class, the class of 1963, because we had to go through all the different guys that were involved in the creation, supporting, founding, and growth of the NFL from 1920 to 1963. So after that, of course, we had to talk about a little, a little bit about the 60s, because that was a huge decade for the NFL and how it was going to be for the future. We had the AFL creation, we had the merger, we also talked about some of the playoff stuff, the Super Bowl history of the first game, and also the Pro Bowl history. And you can get all of the previous 49 episodes in many ways. One thing that I ask you to do each week is, you know, if you haven't already done so, of course, is to subscribe for free to this show by mashing that little subscribe button on your podcast player of choice. That way you get the hottest, freshest off the press episodes each and every week. Also, I end up recommending that you check out my website at thefootballhistorydude.com. When you get there, If you have a specific topic you're looking for, there's a little search navigation bar up at the top. You can also click through the navigation menu for episodes or contact or about the show and all sorts of different things. So definitely check out the website because it gives you a little bit more information about not just this show, but the history of the NFL. And I do recognize I'm asking you for a little bit more promotional stuff here, but I would just with the 50th episode and, you know, that transition period into the 100th NFL season, I wanted to kind of give you a little bit more information as far as how you can react and interact with the show. But with that being said, <laughs> where are we heading? I mean, you, you want to know what's what's on tap, as they used to say back in the day. Well, like I said, I did not plan for this show to be at the cusp of the 100th season of the NFL. Just kind of happened for, you know, perfect timing. When I started the show, I had no clue that the NFL started back in 1920 in some little Hupmobile auto showroom. Alas, the football gods, they said this is my time to bring forth the information and here we go. Let's talk about the 100th season of the NFL. And as this episode is releasing after the Super Bowl, I'm sure that you saw that NFL 100 commercial at the, you know, the Super Bowl there. It was titled the 100 year game. This is because it's a huge event, multiple events for the NFL to help celebrate the great game that the NFL's given us. But not just that, it's really to help celebrate the fans and the interactions that they've had to really, the fans of what grown this show, the NFL that is, not just a show, but you know what I mean. It's just gone from baseball was America's pastime to now football is America's game. That's without doubt. And in the creation of this commercial, there was a quote from someone near and dear to my heart. That's Mr. 
Hall of Famer Barry Sanders, kind of explaining his experience of creating this commercial, and it went as such. I hope the ad will remind everyone of the passion and excitement surrounding football as well as the rivalry and unexpectedness of the game. In my wildest dreams, I could have never imagined so many players and NFL stars all coming together to run around in tuxedos for three days. The energy and camaraderie across generations on that set as we filmed was incredible and bodes well for what fans can expect in the NFL 100 celebration ahead. Like I said, a little near and dear to my heart, as you many of you know, Barry Sanders is the, with a few different E's, reason why I'm so passionate about football. I mean, I had my grandpa that had the, you know, forethought to bring us all into the family as a football family and all that kind of thing. But until I was able to watch Barry Sanders juke dudes out of their jockstraps, I wasn't hooked like I was after watching that number 20 just roam around the Silver Dome and just make everyone look silly. It just gives me a little bit of chills reading it, though, because it could have been so much more. He should have the record. And I really wish he would have got the Super Bowl. However, we still have a chance. Hopefully, you know, Detroit Lions, let's, let's bring me home a Super Bowl one of these days. And I always talk about, give me your favorite football moments. You know, the time that you had playing the game, the game you watched, the person you idolized, the legendary play that you watched and where you were, you remember it exactly how it is. Well, let's give you a football history dude football moment for you. Now, in high school, I signed up to be a running back because Growing up, I was Barry Sanders until I realized that I was not Barry Sanders. So these coaches, now in training camp, take a little offense to this, but the coaches would always joke, you know, you know, you get hit in the hole to get past the first line wave and hit up on the linebackers and stuff. They'd always go to me, January, February, March. I'm like, dude, come on, man. They're like, I'm a sundial, you know, hitting the hole. So henceforth, I got stuck on the offensive line and therefore I was a lineman forever and then a linebacker, but still worked out. I had a lot of fun. And that kind of bodes into this whole NFL 100 and the festivities that are going to surround it with the local team venues and all the different levels of football from, you know, little tykes up the way out to pro football, the NFL and the Hall of Fame. Everything is going to kind of have the synergistic energy. And it's just going to be a cool year and season for all of us to be able to watch the NFL. Like I said, the NFL officially kicked off the festivities for NFL 100 during Super Bowl week. But it's going to run all the way up to the next year's Super Bowl. There's going to be activities and other unique celebrations throughout the year. And it's going to be at not just the big events, you know, the draft and the regular season games and playoffs and Super Bowl. It's also going to be in each of the 32 teams' local venues. There's going to be various ways that they're going to celebrate the 100th season of the NFL. There was a release that came out from Commissioner Roger Goodell that went as such. With fans at the center, NFL 100 will be a big family reunion for all those across the country and around the world whose lives have been enriched by the sport of football. Over nearly 100 years, the NFL and the game of football have continued to evolve and grow. NFL 100 is a chance to celebrate how far we've come and look ahead for the next 100 years. Now, I know I'm probably not going to kick it around on this rock that's spinning around the sun for another 100 years, but it would be sweet to be able to see how much, well, first of all, how much has the NFL transformed from back in 1920 to how it is now? Just think about the digital age and how fast things shift from just from minute to minute, let alone year to year and decade to decade. I wonder what What's the growth trajectory for the NFL? Now, even beyond that, what's the way that the NFL is going to get the fans involved? I mean, we already have these different, you know, the Oculus Rift type thing or whatever else they have with the 3D and you just, whoa, I'm I'm, I'm on the field and that kind of thing. And there's just a lot of opportunity to now, with technology, be able to get the fans more involved. And with that being said, there's also another quote that came from Pete Abitante, the chair of the NFL 100 campaign that went as such. We've coined the term Fantennial to serve as a spirit of the NFL 100 celebration. We're excited to recognize fans all season long with once-in-a-lifetime experiences, all while we pay tribute to the players, coaches, and teams that have helped create and continue to foster the NFL. So from a personal level, now this opens up this huge, wide-open door of topics for the show in the upcoming year, because we have to talk about the entire 100-year span of the NFL. Like I said, we've, we, we like tossed a few darts on the board, but there's a lot of different cool information that's out there for us to be able to research and just spit back out so we can learn about it. 
there's going to be episodes for sure from the past because it's the history of football, you know, the football history dude. But also, I think we're going to get into a little bit of the future state of the NFL, trying to predict, yet also trying to be able to see where the NFL believes it's going to be. Then we can all have this discussion of if we think that it's on the right path or not. And I hope to, with this being part of the uh, format, I hope that I can, you know, begin to interview for the, the insights about how football was for someone that was firsthand or also maybe someone that's involved with, maybe it's the television rights. I don't know, maybe it's the player personnel, you know, the NFL PA. It could be a lot of different things. Even the guy who's creating the different kind of graphics for the different sports channels, whatever it is. You know, just have these different kinds of perspectives and fans from around the world even come into the podcast so we can start learning more and more from different angles. Another thing the NFL 100 Celebration will have is a major philanthropic initiative, and it's going to launch at the draft in Nashville this year. It's intended to inspire everyone involved with the NFL to support communities. Now, something I have to say, though, is even though this is going to be very beneficial, the NFL and everyone around it does a very good job, I think, of supporting the local communities. Which brings me to another quote from Roger Goodell, and it goes as such. For nearly 100 years, the NFL has been part of the fabric of America, unifying communities and bringing fans together to support their favorite teams and players. We have the greatest fans in the world. Next year, we will join our fans in celebrating what this incredible game means to each of us. So keep it tuned here and everywhere else you watch, listen, and consume NFL content because I think the experiences coming up are going to be one of a kind. And one way that you can follow, I saw on the NFL website, is uh, through the various social media channels. They're going to use the hashtag NFL100. That's the number 100. So just NFL100 anywhere pretty much that they have any kind of information with all that being said i would love to hear your ideas for episodes in the future head to the football slash contact for ways to send me your ideas and if you want to share your personal favorite football moment you can head to that website or you can go straight to myfootballmoment.com. again i wanted to say thank you for all of you that's followed me through the past 50 episodes And here's to a strong 100th NFL season and another 50 episodes of the football history dude. I hope you enjoyed this week's recap of the football history dude and were able to gain some knowledge nuggets about the future of the show and the 100th season of the NFL. In the upcoming episode, we're going to explore how the rules have changed throughout the decades of the NFL. But for now, dudes, I'm through if you're through. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Football History Dude. To make sure you're the first to get the next episode, please subscribe on your podcast player of choice and head on over to thefootballhistorydude.com for the show notes and more information on the history of the NFL. And remember, dudes, where we're going, we don't need roads. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday's Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories, and Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.